This video is about empirical formulae, formulae just being the plural for formula. And it is the simplest ratio of atoms of each element in a compound. So let's just do a few examples to explain what this means. If you have a hydrocarbon, for example, C4H10, the number of atoms of each element is in the ratio of four carbon atoms to 10 hydrogen atoms. Another example, if you've got C2H4, in this compound the ratio of atoms of each element is two carbon atoms to four hydrogen atoms. But the empirical formula is not the same as the normal compound formula that you see. The empirical formula is the simplest ratio of atoms of each element. So if we take this one, two to four is not the simplest ratio that you could have. If you divided both by two, you would see a simpler ratio of one to two. So the empirical formula for C2H4 the simplest ratio of those atoms would be CH2. For C4H10, again, this is not the simplest ratio of atoms, but this one, when we work out the empirical formula, will highlight an important point because the simplest ratio has to be a whole number. So you can't have a decimal has to be a simplest whole number ratio of atoms. So this one here, C4H10, we'll see if we can make it a bit simpler. So again, we divide both sides by the smallest number. So 4 divided by 4 and 10 divided by 4. And that would give us a ratio of 1 to 2.5. However, we've said that the ratio must be a whole number, so we cannot write C H 2.5. We can't do that. You can't do that because it's a decimal. It has to be a whole number. But what we can do is double this here. Double both of these to C 2 H 5. Doubling both sides, so multiplying that side by 2 and that side by 2 and then you would have the ratio of 2 to 5 2 carbon atoms to 5 hydrogen atoms so our empirical formula for C4H10 would be C2H5 and you could see that by just looking at the C4H10 here and trying to divide it by whole numbers to get it um, in a simpler ratio but it's easier to go through these steps first of all by dividing it by the smallest number etc. So in general the empirical formula is the simplest ratio of atoms of each element in a compound. So you could have something like C3H6 for example and that is a ratio of 3 to 6. If you divide both by 3, you will have the same empirical formula as C2H4, the simplest ratio of 1 carbon to 2 hydrogen, which is C2H2. Just remember, <clears throat> at this case, you never ever write a number 1 here. If you only have one atom, you just leave it blank. You don't write the number one. So it's to CH2. So you might see them in that form and ask, be asked to um, write the empirical formula. Or you might see it in a longer question form, like this example here. A compound contains 38.8 grams of carbon, 16.2 grams of hydrogen, and 45.1 grams of nitrogen. Calculates its empirical formula. Now you're given relative atomic masses here. If you're not given those, you should look on your data sheet, use the key and find the relative atomic masses of each of the elements. 
So in this example, we write down the information we've got. So first of all, underline it or use your highlighter in, in, in an exam. So 38.8 grams of carbon. 16.2 grams of hydrogen. And I'll put the C here so I don't get lost and the H for hydrogen. And 45.1 sorry, 45.1 grams of nitrogen. And to calculate its empirical formula, we need to use its relative atomic masses. And what you do is divide by the relative atomic mass. So we've got 38.8 grams of carbon, so we divide by 12. We've got 16.2 grams of hydrogen, so we divide by 1. So just taking these numbers down to the bottom, and 45.1 grams of nitrogen divided by 14. And this will give us the ratio of the atoms in the compound. So if we use our calculator, we can do 38.8 divided by 12, which gives us 3.2. Then we do 16 Point two divided by 1, which gives us, of course, 16.2. And we do 45.1 divided by 14, which gives us 3.2. Now, sometimes you can start to see the ratio already in these numbers. But the next step we need to do will make the ratio of the elements even more clearer. So the next step is to divide by the smallest number. So here we've divided by the relative atomic mass and then we've got a ratio but to get it even simpler you divide by the smallest number. So here we'll have 3.2 divided by 3.2 16.2 divided by 3.2 and 3.2 divided by 3.2 and if we do those calculations we will see that we've got a ratio of 3.2 divided by 3.2 is 1 16.2 divided by 3.2 is 5 don't worry if there's extra decimals in there just round it and 3.2 divided by 3.2 is 1. So we worked our way down in columns. So this is the number of carbons. So when we go to write the empirical formula, we keep it all in the same order. So C, H, 5, and 1N for nitrogen. So this would be the empirical formula. I've got two more examples here to help you be a little bit more resilient in the exam. This one, we've got 5.3 grams of sulphur reacts with oxygen to produce 10.6 grams of sulphur dioxide. Calculate the empirical formula of sulphur dioxide. Now, in this case, they've been cheeky because they want you to do a further calculation. They've not given you the mass of oxygen. So you need to work that out. So if you're talking about sulphur reacting with oxygen, because of the conservation of mass, everything that you react together equals all of the products, you should have 5.3 grams of sulphur reacting with oxygen to make sulfur 10.6 grams of sulfur dioxide. So all you need to do to get the amount of oxygen is to do 10.6 minus 5.3 on your calculator. So 10.6 minus 5.3 is 5.3. Always even though these are quite simple calculations, always do them on the calculator because you could risk losing four marks just by the pressure of an exam and trying to do simple maths. 
So we've got 5.3 grams of sulfur reacting with 5.3 grams of oxygen to make 10.6 grams of sulfur dioxide. Now I don't have to worry about this bit, we're concentrating on the um, 5.3 grams of sulfur and the 5.3 grams of oxygen. So again we use our um, same rule as last time, is we divide by the relative atomic masses and these are given here so 5.3 divided by 32 and 5.3 divided by 16 which we'll need our calculator for so here we've got 0 0.17 And here we've got 0 0.33. So to get our ratio, if it's not obvious to us here, we divide by the smallest number. Which is 0 0.17. Because that's the smallest number, we divide both numbers by 0 0.17. So we'll find we'll have a ratio of 1, because 0 0.17 divided by 0 0.17 is 1. To look at our next ratio, 0 0.33 divided by 0 0.17, which is 2. Now don't worry that it's 1.9. As I said before, just round it up. So we've got a ratio of 1 to 2. So this side was our sulphur, so we've got 1 sulphur. And this side was our oxygen, and we've got two oxygens. So our empirical formula for sulfur dioxide is SO2. A final example that I want to show you is when you have a percentage sign, because sometimes it puts people off. So question three says a compound contains 70% of iron and 30% of oxygen by mass. Calculate its empirical formula. Now whenever you see the percentage sign, all I want you to do is cross it out and just put grams because you treat it exactly the same way. So don't get put off, just think of it as grams. So we've got 70 grams of iron and we've got 30 grams of oxygen. So again, the first step is divide by the relative atomic masses. So 56 for iron and 16 for oxygen. That gives us 70 divided by 56 is 1.25. To 30 divided by 16 is 1.875. So we divide both numbers by the smallest number again to get a clearer ratio. So divide by 1.25, divide by 1.25. You've got to do the same things both sides. There we get a ratio of 1 to 1.5. Now if you remember from the start, you cannot leave a ratio as a decimal. So you can't have Fe. O 1.5. You have to have a whole number. So as you can see here, the easiest way to get to a whole number is to times both sides by 2. Times 1.5 by 2 and times 1.2. So our ratio is going to be 2 to 3. Fe 2 O 3, which is the empirical formula for iron oxide. Okay, so here are a couple for you to try. Pause the video now and have a go at calculating the empirical formulae for these two questions. So for question one, underline the key parts again. Compound contains 23.3% magnesium, 30.7% sulphur and 46.0% oxygen. Calculate the empirical formula of this compound showing your working. So we'll try and do three columns to make it clear. 
we've got 23.3 percent magnesium again ignore the percent treat that like grams if you want to cross it out to help you think about it then do so 23.3 first step we divide it by the relative atomic masses so we've got 23.3 um, magnesium divided by 24 from here sulfur we've got 30.7 from here divided by 32 which is the relative atomic mass from here oxygen we've got 46.0 divided by 16 which we get from here so we use our calculators to calculate the ratio so we've got 0 0.97 which will round up to 1 we've got 0 0.95 which will round up to 1 And we've got 2.875, which we will round up to 3. So our ratio is clear there already. So we can write down our ratio as Mg SO3. For question 2, we have 2.4 grams of magnesium reacting with oxygen to form four grams of magnesium oxide. So this is one where you have to do an extra calculation. If we do 4.0 grams of magnesium oxide minus 2.4 grams of magnesium, that will give us 1.6 grams of oxygen. So using the numbers 1.6 and 2.4, we have 2.4 grams of magnesium and 1.6 grams of oxygen divide that by the relative atomic masses so you've got um, 2.4 divided by 24 and 1.6 divided by 16 so if we do that on the calculators we get 0.1 and 1.6 divided by 16 is 0.1 so you probably can clearly see that there that that's a ratio of 1 to 1 because they're both the same but you can do the extra step if it helps dividing both by the smallest which is 0.1 which leaves a ratio of 1 to 1 so the empirical formula for magnesium oxide would be Mg O. Oh. Very well done if you've got both of those answers correct.